Hi folks. In this experiment we're going to be playing around with uh, sodium transport. <clears throat> but I want to back up right uh, right now and show you uh, why I want to uh, do this experiment. Okay, in the in the last video uh, what I did was I took interclated graphite that was interclated with phosphoric acid and then I mixed it with a borax solution and then exfoliated that graphite by changing the uh, phosphoric acid into trisodium phosphate. Okay, now the problem is trisodium phosphate is alkaline and phosphoric acid is acid. Okay, and then ideally what we're looking for is an alkaline hydrophilic surface here on the uh, anode and a hydrophobic acidic surface here on the on the cathode. Okay, so ideally our, our TSP ought to be over here on this side. If you take sulfuric acid, for instance, and mix it with magnesium, you get a magnesium sulfate salt from that, and it's acid just like the sulfuric acid is. Okay, and, and if you take a hydrochloric acid, another strong mineral acid, and dissolve zinc in it, you get zinc chloride, which is also acid. Now, but phosphoric acid, which is a weak acid, and when you mix sodium with that, uh, you form TSP, and, t and it switches alkalinity. It goes from an acid to an alkaline, and that's a little kind of weird, isn't it? You know, the other uh, the other acids don't do that. It's just the phosphoric acid, as far as I know, and and I'm not exactly sure why it does that, but that's certainly what happens to it because it is alkaline. So anyway, what I want to do this time is. I'm going to make another cell, and this time I'm just going to keep the phosphoric acid interclated graphite here on the on the cathode. We're going to use a borax separator, and then on one side of the borax separator, I'm going to have uh, the TSP uh, exfoliated interclated graphite on that side, and then the titanium dioxide, of course, in it on our uh, zinc uh, electrode here. Now. Uh, to illustrate what we're talking about on the sodium transport, let's just ignore everything but the phosphoric acid and the TSP right here. Now the only two, the only difference between these two molecules right here is the sodium. Okay, so as we discharge and charge the cell, the sodium should move back and forth across the membrane and just exchange places on these on these two. That's what I'm thinking anyway. And, and that's basically how a lithium ion uh, battery works. And I'll, I'll show you a picture of a lithium ion battery uh, here shortly and uh, you, can, you can see that for yourself. So, all right, here's a basic uh, lithium ion battery and you can see the uh, sodium uh, moves back and forth across the, uh, the membrane uh, during uh, charge and discharge on it. Now let me show you something uh, a little different about the lithium ion battery. Now here's another picture of a lithium di uh, ion battery and what you want to notice here is that the lithium metal oxide is on the cathode and the carbon is on the uh, anode. That's just ass backwards from the biocell where our, our metal oxide, titanium dioxide, is on the anode and the carbon is on the cathode. Now I'm not exactly sure why that's re reversed, but uh, it's probably got something to do with the titanium dioxide being a valve metal and only letting the um, only letting the current flow in one direction. But I don't know about that. We don't know very little about valve metals. All right, I'm ready to build and test the cell, and uh, I've got uh, interclated phosphoric acid uh, graphite. I'll paint it, uh, one coat painted on the uh, graph foil here. I've got the exfoliated uh, graphite with uh, uh, borax, PSP on this uh, separator paper, and titanium dioxide in uh, PVA uh, film on that. So all we got to do is put it back together and hydrate it. Uh, these have all set for a while and they're all dry, so. We're just going to uh, put it together and rehydrate it and test it. All right, we'll start with the put the borax separator on there. With the two different, so now we have the two different types, and the 
this is a distilled water here so we're going to moisten it up with that fast. This is the typical what we've been seeing. And on, on the amps, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to produce somewhere around the, the same as the, the last cell. And so I'm on the 10 amp scale here. It doesn't look like we're going to go up to 117 or so, which we were getting on the other cells. Looks like it's going to stop around 111 or 112, maybe. So we're going to test it right about 111, looks like. That's a good number, 1111. All right, so here we are on the 10 amp scale, and we're at 111.4. Ready? Three, two, one. 32 so we got 320 I think the um, one the last battery uh, peaked at uh, 290 so this is starting off a little bit better than than the last one we'll see how it uh, how it goes and it doesn't look like it's going to get the uh, the same amount of voltage drop as the other cell either because we're already back to almost 105 and we were getting about uh, a tenth of a volt drop before and we're not going to get that this time so now we stopped at pretty much 105.3 let's see what we get here, ready? 3, 2, 1, 3 that time a little bit lower alrighty, let's let her climb back up And it looks like it's uh, still charging. I thought it was going to stop lower than that, but it's doing pretty good actually. Uh, 102, and we're still climbing. And it's really not jumping around much, like it's got a short on it. All right, so we'll hit it here about 103. Let's see what we get. Alrighty, here we go. Come on. There's 103. Ready? 3, 2, 1. 2, 7 that time. So we are losing our losing our uh, amps on it. But we've seen those come back up too on these things. give this one just a little more time and uh, see what it pegs out at the top. I'll be back. Alright, as you can see we made it back to uh, 103 and it's still climbing really slow. So, and it's interesting that uh, all of these batteries when they, when they drop their voltage at the beginning they all go down to about 103 and they, and they stop right there and look like it looks like we're starting to climb uh, the boulders are starting to climb again which is what it should do about 103 they all seem to do the same thing all right so now let's uh, test the amps and see what we got ready we're at 1034 and 321 and that's dropped down to 1.9 so we're definitely losing our power and it's probably because of the graphite on both sides of that separator but it does look like it's working Okay, here's uh, another page from that same article about lithium-ion batteries, and uh, one of the interesting things on on this page uh, is that it talks about uh, additives for uh, lithium, and uh, it talks about uh, the six-carbon uh, graphite uh, addition to uh, 
to lithium, uh, how it binds to it, and, uh, and it also talks about um, silicon can bind uh, four um, lithium ions too, so, uh, and that's really similar to uh, also to what uh, the phosphate ion does, or the boron ion, or any of those oxygen uh, f four, uh, four oxygen uh, atoms, really. Uh, phosphates, uh, sulfates, uh, whatever, they're all uh, bond uh, for oxygens. So um, anyway, and then the next uh, interesting thing on uh, this page was the, uh, the highlighted uh, part right there where they added uh, uh, titanium to, uh, to the lithium and uh, got good results with it, although they said the cost was high and uh, that's because they're using titanium instead of titanium dioxide <laughs> which is real cheap so uh, anyway uh, you can see the, the, the similarities to uh, the technology here to a lithium ion battery I guess that's it for this video folks and uh, I just wanted to show you what I was working on and uh, test and see if the sodium ion uh, transfer uh, would work in the cell and it apparently does and uh, so uh, I seriously doubt that I've built the cell uh, to, to really take advantage of that very well. So uh, I'm going to uh, play around with it and um, see if I can come up with a better way to build it and uh, improve upon the performance. And uh, when I do that, I'll be back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.